And I want you to note here when the brothers bring up this false story about their father. It's right after the funeral. Note also the brothers refer to Jacob as your father and not our father before your father died. And they do this to, to, you know, kind of reinforce the gravity of the message. They're manipulating Joseph before your father died. This is what he told us. And they even invoke the name of God. Look at what it says. Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. You know, just now they're putting like this religious guilt thing uh, uh, upon it. Do you want to disappoint the God of your father? You know how important God was to dad. We laugh because it's familiar. Sadly, this kind of stuff often happens in families when someone dies. Especially when it's a parent that dies and when there's many siblings involved in the family. And quite often it is right after the funeral. Sometimes it's before the funeral, before we can even bury dad. This stuff is already coming up. And you may have a family member. Who says right before he died, dad told me. He wants me to have his car and live in his house rent free. (laughs) But dad didn't tell any of us that. (laughs) I know nobody else was in the room. I was alone with him and dad said it was his desire, his dying wish. Or or mom told me just before she died, she wants me to have her diamond ring and all of her jewelry. That's her wish. We want to honor mom's last wish, right? Did mom write that down anywhere, like in the will? Did she tell anyone else? Now, we can laugh about it, but listen, this kind of stuff happens in the best families. It happens in Christian families. And and we have to do our best to guard against quarrels in our family when a loved one dies. You know, emotions are high, people are grieving, If there's any unresolved conflict in the family, it's going to come out. If you have a family member who's greedy or untrustworthy or a scoundrel, that's going to come out. It's just it's just very, very common, very, very common. Doesn't make it any easier to know that it happens to everybody kind of thing, but it's it happens. We have to guard against it. Ephesians chapter four, verse three says, endeavor to keep the unity. It means make every effort. And even when you make every effort, you you might have a family member who still just blows everything up. You know, as much as you try to keep the unity. So look at the end of verse 17. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Now, we're not told why he wept. Does Joseph weep because after 17 years of having a restored relationship with his brothers and showing forgiveness and and kindness to his brothers. He's he's surprised to find out this is what they really think about him. You you guys think I've been holding a grudge against you for these 17 years and I've just been waiting for dad to die so I can take vengeance on you. Is that really is that really what you think? Is that the kind of person you think that I am? Maybe he's weeping over that realization. Or is he weeping because he knows his brothers have fabricated this story? And he knows they're lying. And as soon as dad dies, the brothers go back to their old deceptive ways. They go right back to their lying. Is he, is he weeping because he realizes his brothers haven't really changed that much at all? In all these years. We don't know. Look at his response here. It says in verse 18 that his brothers came. They fell down before his face. Remember, this was the the prophecy that that Joseph received when he was a teenager, that his brothers would bow down before him. And they said, behold, we are your servants. And, And Joseph said to them, look what he says in verse 19. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for am I in the place of God? I love Joseph's answer here. Joseph is not in the place of God. In other words, Joseph says, hey, you don't need to be worried about me forgiving your sins. You need to be worried about God forgiving your sins. 
God will be your ultimate judge. And only God can forgive you. You need to be right with God. That's good advice. You know, when we sin against other people, we also sin against God. So we we not only need to seek forgiveness and reconciliation with the person we sinned against, we also need forgiveness and reconciliation with God. We need to confess our sins to God and ask God to forgive us and cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so look, he goes on in verse 20, probably the, you know, the most famous verse in Joseph's life. Such an important verse. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Joseph could see God's sovereign hand in his life. He could see how God used the evil his brothers committed against him for good and for his purposes. And this was the key to Joseph not becoming bitter or angry or filled with resentment towards his brother, this, brothers. This is why Joseph could forgive his brothers, because Joseph could see how God used the terrible things that his brothers did to him, the terrible things that happened to him. And they were terrible. They were horrible. But he could see how God used those things in his life for good. And how God brought good out of those terrible things. You know, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. All things. Not most things or some things. All things work together for good to those who love God. And so we always want to look for the good God is working in our circumstances. Instead of just focusing on how terrible it is and how bad it is and how horrible and wrong. And it's true. Those things are true. I'm not trying to lessen that. But we want to look for the good God is working in our circumstances. Sometimes the good is simply that, that we're praying more. That this terrible thing that has happened to us has got us seeking God more and reading our Bible more than we were before the difficulty entered our lives. Or we're, we're walking by faith now in a way that we weren't walking by faith before this happened, before this trial, or we're closer to the Lord now. We're, we have a closer walk. And that's the good that came out of this terrible tragedy. We always want to look for the good that God is doing. Joseph could see the, the, that God used this evil his brothers did against him to put Joseph in a position to save many lives, including his own family. Family.